this land of ours and fill the sportsman's dreams. Enjoy what nature holds for us, her bounty never ends. Getting back to basics with the practical sportsman. It's always an adventure, no matter where we go. From a favorite hunting spot to the highest fishing hole. Outdoor life we all can share with family and friends. We'll do it all together with the practical sportsman. We'll do it all together with the practical sportsman. Hello, sportsman. This Sunday, the 22nd of June, is Father's Day. You have any clues as to what to give your dad? I got an idea. Instead of getting him something, something concrete, you know, like some object, why don't you take him fishing? You can get a charter. Well, I did this this uh, past September. Took my dad out on a fishing trip. I hadn't been fishing with my dad in years. I also took the dean of Cooley Law School, two, two guys who were pretty important to me in the last few years, in fact, my whole life. Stay tuned. I'll show you a great Father's Day gift. You've heard the slogan, take a boy fishing. Well, that's what I did at the end of August. In fact, I took two boys fishing. Not young boys, these were older boys. But neither had ever been on a boat like this in the Great Lakes. The best chance, too, is a $400,000 Tierra. A boat you usually see is a cabin cruiser. Best chance has it outfitted for fishing. Lots of space in the back, rod racks all over. This boat is big enough to take most any wind, waves, or weather that Lake Michigan dishes out. Now on this day, Lake Michigan was calm off Saugatuck. That's always a bonus when you want the people you're taking fishing to have a positive experience. Our crew included deckhand Bill Bale, my father, Norm Trost, Captain Dave Engel, and Dean Don LeDuc, the Dean of Cooley Law School, a man who had never been trolling on the Great Lakes. I promised if he got me through law school, I'd take him fishing. Dave Engel took the boat out to 140 feet of water. The El Nino effect of this summer has kept the water unusually warm and the fish unusually deep. Now, the Dean taught me administrative law. This was my chance to teach the Dean about salmon fishing. Both Don LaDuke and my dad had never used some of this space-age fishing tackle at best chance. Rods without guides, reels with sophisticated clutches. I enjoyed introducing them to this new experience. There we go, King Salmon. That happens to be on good line with a good knot, good snap swivels. There he goes again. And then as that fish gets up here to the boat, what we want you to do is step over towards the middle and keep the rod down low to the gunnel okay. of the boat. That'll keep the fish from being pulled out of the water and getting pulled off. Okay. What about pumping the rod, Bill? Is that not... We got uh, lever drag reels by Shimano here, and they're very, very smooth, so we don't really have to pump on them. If you got a drag that's sticky or something, then you may have to pump the fish in. Occasionally, we'll have the guy pump it, but not kind of salmon like this, you won't have to do that. See how the fish is coming up to the surface there? But you can see your line coming up out of the water there? Yep. Okay, now it's time to slide over towards the middle of the boat a little bit. There you go, you see your fish on the surface back there? Not yet. The slider's on here. There he's running at you. See, you see him running right at us? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yep. Real like Re man. Keep Real like man. man. There, you okay. there you go. Now see how he's coming right at yep. you? Yep. Keep it tight. There you go. See that fish is just swimming there, relaxing. Yep. Yep. These salmon you have to be kind of aggressive with. The, okay. the lake trout are passive, you know, yeah, you want to be I, slow and easy, but these you got to keep, see how he's running all over, he's actually yep, running ahead of yep, the, yep, dodge. yeah, he is, coming right at it now, yeah. what we want you to do is stay down, okay, and take one step back to the middle of the boat, there you go, right there, are you doing, we're a little tangled, so we're going to have to, this trick here, okay, just back up, back up, <laughs> Got him. We got tangled in our extra lure up here. Nice salmon. Well, it is the a grill. Nice one. The grill, yeah, that looks grill? good on the grill. All right, all right. Now that is that your Thank first. You, that's your first salmon trolling. You correct. Oh. That's right. Well, let's get this the scoop very here. first one. You just saw the dean of Cooley Law School reel in a salmon, but the the, the little known secret is he's fished steelhead for many years. For many years. Yep. This is my first. Uh, this is a schnook. 
That's a king salmon, Chinook salmon. Yeah, that's my first one of those. A lot more active than lake trout. Lake trout's the only other oh, kind yeah. of fish I've ever caught a lot. But now, did move around a lot more. But you fished your steelhead when? Back in the 70s and early 80s? Yeah, well, late 60s and 70s. Then what a little happened? bit into the early 80s. Got old. No, oh, come on. Not me. No. <laughs> no. Uh, kids getting into school age, and all my uh, fishing buddies got uh, uh, old and retired, and it was hard to get a group together, and the social part was gone, so that was part of it. Part of it was the kids getting into high school activities and that kind of thing, going to the games. But now your kids are in their 20s. Those excuses yeah. are gone. Yeah, they are. you got a cush job. Yeah, true. you got time, and, and you know you have enough income that you can afford to do this. But So why haven't you been? Well, it's a full-time job just taking care of people like you, Fred. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, had you, you know, I had you on my hands for the last three years. <laughs> it was tough. It was tough. I had to work extra hard to get you through law school. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and I appreciate it. You well, did you well. should, you, you well. should. And yeah. I, you know, I meet your dad here, and uh, now I understand uh, that I'm not alone carrying this burden. <laughs> what are you laughing for? Oh, you guys. I just, I huh? just, no, I'm not laughing. <laughs> You're laughing. <laughs> carrying yeah. the burden? That seemed yeah. to strike a note. Yeah, that did. That did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, uh, Don, you did a good job there. Oh, thank you. Huh? Yeah. No, that was there's, a lot of coaches, there's a lot of coaches around here. It's pretty hard to go too wrong. Everybody give me instructions. Right. You noticed that. Making a, throwing in an extra line made it a little harder. But <laughs> what, was that, that was a uh, well, that coho? Was king salmon. King salmon. The majority of our catch have been kings or chinook. That, there, that particular fish is a, what we call a three-year-old king. In other words, it would live another year here in the lake. We can tell by the size and the way the scales come off and stuff. And then the majority of our catch is that right now, with a few lake trout mixed in there. Some days more lake trout, and then occasional coho, maybe one or two coho. You know, if we get three or four, is a big day on the coho. But we have been catching coho almost every day consistently. Are they are the fish mixed up? Uh, as far as a, uh, a school of fish, they'll be mixed up, or will they be pretty much segregated? All kings and the all fish. No, the fish school for the same reasons. The bait. Food bait fish are there. Yeah. They basically like the same temperature, water temperatures, any from the low 40s to the mid mid to high 50s is where those fish will be, and they're all there for the same reason to eat BL wife. That's where the what we'll do is we'll find the severe. We'll go down. You asked me the temperature it was 76 degrees on the surface. Okay, yeah. it's 42 degrees, 110 foot down right here. In between there, there's a severe temperature break at, at about 70 feet. It goes from in the high 60s to the mid 50s. From that level down are where the salmon and trout are right now because that's where the bait fish are. The zooplankton and stuff all builds up on that severe temperature break, mm -hmm. and that causes the bait fish to come there. And, of course, the big fish come after them, and we go mm -hmm. after the big fish. So yeah. that's why we're fishing deeper. You know, this water you can see has got a lot of plant life, you know, a lot of a lot of plankton, a lot of stuff in it just because of the color of it, you know, it's, it's real green. It looks like almost like you're in the Bahamas, you know. Yeah. You know, ocean water right now. So we get right. the water is beautiful. Now one thing we do in the in the business is put your arms out. Yeah, <laughs> to make the fish look bigger. Yeah, yeah, well you know that to that though. So. Uh, put your fingers back underneath the fish. Uh, Slide your fingers back yeah. underneath the okay. fish. Uh, back no, underneath. Not, yeah. No. We back underneath. Oh, you I don't see. want your oh. fingers out in front. Oh, I see. Oh, it's oh, like oh, that fish out away from you. Try and to make it look, look bigger. Big. I see. You got your fingers up there. Looks like you got the hands with fingers that long. Ah. Show you a little tricks. I didn't even know that. I'm just too modest for this business. Yeah. Hold her out there. Yeah. Well, that's a good one. Oh, look how pretty the green is on it. Okay. The thing is, this size though, it's great eating. Yeah. It's great eating. See, they got the. Your steelhead have white mouth. Uh -huh. Salmon all have black mouth. Okay, that's a good lesson. So that, that's how you can tell the, the king and the uh, coho salmon have a black mouth, and all the trout mm -hmm. have white mouths. White gums. Uh -huh. Anything else? Any other? See how he's spotted on the tail, and his tail semi veed here. Yep. Okay, that's more of a salmon. A coho wouldn't have the extensive spots on the tail uh -huh. like that. It'd have a white mouth. What about the steelhead tail? The steelhead would be more straight square across blunt, yeah. Instead of being semi veed like yeah. this. And it'll have lots of spots on that. Yeah. Well that's a nice color in this. Yeah. Up here on the top, you can see the in the sunlight, the iridescence. Great eating too. Yeah, they're they're kind of slurpy. Slurpy. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Thanks, Fred. Let's, right here. let's get him back in here this before he goes past you. On the ice, yeah. On the ice. Well, seeing Don LaDuke.
My dean at Cooley catches first salmon was a lot of fun for me. Maybe I enjoyed it more than he did because it was such a new experience for him on the Great Lakes. Well, then I got to watch my dad tussle with the big fish. Now, this was the guy who introduced me to the joys of hunting and fishing. Nice and steady on the reel. How's it feel? Now, you don't have to worry about the, uh, having the guides. On this one, this no. One. We're so poor we can't afford to have guides on these rods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, these are the new experimental ones we were telling you about. No guides on them, so you get a nice true arc. You get a good feeling for the fish with them, too. These reels are very fast. You notice how if you turn the handle slower, that you're gaining line better on him than when you're turning it real fast. Yeah, well, and the reason being is when you slipping. turn it fast, is you actually slip the clutch. Yeah, you slip in the clutch, right. Good news is you only got another 88 yeah, meters. Oh, you know, uh, those are meters? <laughs> Seriously, that's yeah, meters? Yeah, that one's in meters. Oh, so that's... That was 115 meters out. Yeah. Wow, that's 345 feet. More than that, meters. Yeah, that's more than a football field. Just got to take your time. Young guy like you, you know, you yeah. can't just rush into it. You got to just right. nice and easy and enjoy the fight. See how you're gaining them? So just slow but sure. You know, if you yeah. pull up on him and you're in the middle of the pole at 10 foot of leverage and he thrashes down, when the fish is thrashing, you feel that pumping on the rod. Uh -huh. He's actually laying in the water with his mouth open, head going back and forth trying to get rid of that hook. Yeah. So you're pulling up at the same time he's doing that, you're actually helping him. Yeah. And by just a nice steady reel and keeping the rod bent like that, you know, it doesn't allow him to tear off as quick, especially with a trout with a little more soft mouth than what the salmon are. So we were telling Don there when it was a salmon, you, know, you could be a little more aggressive with them. Uh -huh. And the trout, you have to be a, use a little more finesse and take it a little easier with them. So you're you're betting that this is a lake trout. <clears throat> are you a betting man, are you, Dad? Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I won't bet against you. You won't? <laughs> no, no, no. I say, I got a dime in my pocket here I'd be willing to bet <laughs> no, you. No, no, I mean... Yeah, I'm sure you're right. Got a nice shiny one here. Yeah. <laughs> Could be yours. <laughs> well, I'll just, uh, I'll take that dime you're bet. You're going to take that dime bet? <laughs> yeah, I'll take that dime bet. There, there you are. go. <laughs> See, that's not really gambling. That's just good, clean fun. That's right. <laughs> you never fished with a rod like this with a line going up to the middle, have you? No, never have. Now, in fact, I've never seen one before. Fish with, fish with no uh, dime bamboo pole. Yeah. Can, can you tell any difference? What? No. No, except, I don't know. Uh, no, I can't tell any difference. Which... Just keep a nice steady reel on it. i get the net up here. Back just a little bit, Dad. Oops. There you go. Stay right here with me, buddy. There we go. You're not going to swing him aboard, are you? Keep your rod down, Dad. Keep your rod down. There you go. Now just left towards the front of the bowl. Left, left. Let him down, Dad. Let him right. down. There you go. Hey, that's All a right. dandy. That's a good one. Yes, indeed. Hang right on. Let me pull a little line off. You know what that cost you? Yeah, it cost me a dime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Oh, much hold him up, Bob. Okay. You want to get your hands dirty or you want me to hold them up? No, I got it. You got him? Oh, yeah. There you yeah, go. you see, it was on, on Don's fish, it was a black mouth, the black oh, mouth of the salmon. That's white, yeah. white of the trout. Yeah. yeah there you go. kind of marbled looking. Yeah, he is kind of, he is marbled. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty yeah. neat. He did quite a right. Well, yeah, he did. I'll have to say that. <laughs> yeah. Good okay. Job. We put him in here. In the, the cooler. There you go. Now Don's fish isn't so lovely in there. There we go. Well, both of my boys now had fish. Frankly, it had taken several hours of trolling in the early afternoon, but by 6 p.m., the wind died down. The water was flat, but the fishing pace picked up. All right. Hey, how about that? There. That's a fish. That's a fish. That's a fish. That is. All right. Well, thank you for that one. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. It's the dean of the college here. Now we're darn proud of this fish. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well now the dean is showing more sparkle. His enthusiasm for Great Lakes trolling is growing, but, you know, it isn't just catching trophy fish that we're after. 
nor do we need to catch lots of fish to have a good day. Now, it just so happened that my two boys did catch lots of fish, but the outdoors is sort of a family thing. Bill Bale is like Uncle Bill to Dave Engel's two sons who met us on the dock. Now, even though we're not all related by blood, there is a kinship that develops when people fish together. Now, I've had a kinship with these two guys over the years, and I really enjoyed having us together. When I said we became brothers in the boat, you can see what happened when Don got a fish on. My dad wanted to be a part of Don's accomplishment by netting his fish. Now, netting is a critical time in landing a fish, and my dad almost knocked the fish off. Whoa! The close call made the landing that much sweeter. You want to know what camaraderie is in fishing? Just listen. The family is pulling together like a team. My dad now has a fish on, and Don grabs the net. Now the two of them team up to land another fish. Yeah, this was not my day to catch fish. It was my day to bring a new experience to two very significant people in my life. The excitement was electrifying. And my dad learned that grabbing a rod isn't that easy. Uh oh, out, 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 out. Fishing memories are sweeter when you fish with people you appreciate. Like my dad, the gleam in his eye is a picture I want to remember. There you go. Fish, fun, and family values. The picture of a perfect day. Chances are for Father's Day, your dad would, would, I mean, you know, ties and watches and stuff like that, things, they're okay to give as gifts. Nothing wrong with that at all. But why not give your father a trip or your grandfather or somebody's father, your uncle? You know, take, take dad, whoever is the dad in your life, fishing. I mean, a fishing trip would be something that you could all enjoy together. I mean, you could even take more of the family out and make it a family outing. But I'm sure that that's something that is really unique. Uh, you can book a fishing trip, a charter trip. Uh, you don't have to take them out yourself. Make a treat of it. You know, instead of going out to dinner, take dad fishing. I think that's a great idea. George Iggy from Grand Rapids caught a largemouth bass that, uh, man, that's a big one in anybody's book. Six pounds, 11 ounces. Almost pushing seven. You got this at towards the end of June on a soft craw. Yep, soft craw. So you like fishing with the crawdads? Yeah, they work pretty good. How do you hook them? Oh, you mean like rig them? Yeah. Texas rig. Okay, well, it sounds like you know what you're doing with in, in bass fishing. Mm -hmm. How long have you been fishing bass? Uh, four years. Yeah, and you're how old? Fifteen. So fishing since you're 11. What, do you watch all the bass shows in that? Yeah. Okay, now, you, you kiss them like Jimmy Houston or what? No. You Did know? once. Once. <laughs> <laughs> and what brought that on? Um, it was just a really big bass, and I felt I had to kiss it. I see. <laughs> so you released the bass that you catch? Yep. And you gave it a kiss and sent it on its way. But this one wasn't worth a kiss? No, uh, I didn't think about it then. <laughs> I see. Since you've gotten older, huh? Yeah. And you catch big bass every year? Is that um, what you go for, or do you go for a lot of bass, or what? I go for a lot of bass. And what's the trick to catching a lot of them? It really isn't a trick, just go out and fish. But, you know, a lot of the, the tournament fishermen fish with artificial baits so they can release them. If you're using soft crop, don't they tend to swallow it, or not? Um, not really. I haven't had too many fish swallow my soft plastic baits. Oh, you mean soft craw. You're not talking about an actual crawdad. No, um, a soft plastic crawdad. Ah, oh, the plastic. Okay. So how do you fish it? On the bottom, in the weeds? Or? Yeah, in the weeds. Hmm. You sound like you know what you're doing. What are you going to catch this year? Hopefully a bigger bass. Bigger one. Well, good man. You going to kiss it? Maybe. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. George Iggy from Grand Rapids. 
Rarely does it rain at the fair, and when it does, it's just a brief shower. And we do have sunshine ordered this year. One of the big attractions at our outdoor fair is the shooting show. Firearms have been in the news big time the past few months. Guns are stirring up more controversy than ever. Guns are a big part of the outdoor fair, but we present guns in an educational way. Harry Reinfelder demonstrates shooting tricks, which are always fun to watch, but we also demonstrate what guns can do, what they cannot do, which is a far cry from what you see in the movies. The shooting shows will also cover self-protection, safety locks, and some of the laws that apply to guns in Michigan. Besides the shooting shows, there's lots to do and see at the fair for sportsmen and their families. That Make sure you get outdoors this weekend. And by the way, make plans to take your dad fishing too. See you next week. You asked me the temperature. It was 76 degrees on the surface, okay? Yeah. It's 42 degrees, 110 foot down right here. In between there, there's a severe temperature break at about 70 feet. It goes from in the high 60s to the mid 50s. From that level down are where the salmon and trout are right now because that's where the bait fish are. The zooplankton and stuff all builds up on that severe temperature break. Uh -huh. And that causes the bait fish to come there. And of course, the big fish come after them. And we go after the big fish. So yeah. that's why we're fishing deeper. You know, this water you can see has got a lot of plant life, you know, a lot of, a lot of plankton, a lot of stuff in it. Just